There's something magical in this world where you and God have a chat in which your purpose is found. Now purpose is an ever-changing endeavor. Your purpose in your teens will be different than in your 20s and 30s and beyond. Your purpose is the goal which yields the greatest results on the journey. It will change you. Whether it's mind, body, soul, or all three, you won't come back the same. But wait, you must have it confused. Just because it's your purpose doesn't mean it's your right. There will be obstacles ahead. And sadly, these obstacles is what leads people off the grind and into mediocrity till they forget that they had a purpose in the first place. But what are these barriers? Well, let's jump straight into the unknown truths about purpose. Number one, you will have to say no. This is a huge barrier that blocks a lot of people because they always want to be maybe a people's pleaser, maybe a nice guy. And saying no, quite frankly, makes us feel bad about ourselves. When we treat people badly, when we feel at least like we treat people badly, it makes us feel bad about ourselves. But when saying no, we have to think about those who have achieved the highest extent of their purpose. Do you think somebody like Kobe Bryant was saying yes to all, to every party, to every social gathering, to every single opportunity? Most likely he was saying no. Most likely Steve Jobs was saying no a lot. You see, these people that we look up to, these people we think are so cool, they often had to say no a lot of times in life. And this is because saying no is just saying yes to your purpose. When you say no to one opportunity, yes, that door closes, but every time a door closes, another one opens. When it comes to your time, it's incredibly valuable. It's the only commodity on earth that we really cannot get back. So you must have saying no in your vocabulary or else it will limit how much time you can focus on your purpose. Perhaps you wanna be a bodybuilder. You're gonna to have to make time to go to the gym, but maybe that same time is where a meeting is happening, this is happening, some sort of life obligation. Not a life obligation that you have to do, but socially, you kinda of do have to do it. You may have to say no, or maybe using the bodybuilder example, maybe there's a dinner and you've noticed that it's not the healthiest place. You know, some bodybuilders literally meal prep their dinners and bring them to the dinner just so they don't have to eat off the menu. In a way, that's saying no. Saying no is all about sacrificing. And a lot of times it's sacrificing. A lot of times it's sacrificing one thing over the other. But you have to say no Sometimes you even have to say no to things that you do want, things that you actually want to happen. But because it doesn't align with your purpose, you have to say no anyways. Within this step, you may feel within this step you may feel like you've hurt others' feelings, that you've hurt your own feelings. But you have to trust not your gut, not your but you have to trust not your feelings, but your gut and realize that if it doesn't align with your purpose, say no. If it gets in front of your purpose, say no. If it does not contribute to your purpose, say no. Second point is fighting the constant drift. There's always a little bit of drift within our lives, if you've noticed. Even recording this video, there were so many things piling up, getting the camera angle right, getting the microphone right. This microphone isn't even on. It's just there for show. My actual mic is on my camera. But the point is, there's so many little tiny obstacles to take away from your purpose. Perhaps you want to go out for a run. Whether it's cold, it's raining. You've always noticed that there's always a little bit of something. This is called drifting. And most people allow the small obstacles to destroy their big purpose. You gotta accept that there's always going to be something. There's always gonna be a tiny barrier, or a tiny hurdle that you need to jump. Like I said in the beginning, just because your 
is your purpose, it's not your right. You see, most people do not complete their goals. Most people do not complete their purpose. It's something that you quite honestly need to work for. And I don't know if it's the universe. I don't know if it's God, but there's always a little bit of something in your way to stop you from doing what you have to do. Of course, how do we overcome this, right? We overcome this by thinking logically, incredibly logically. Do not think with your feelings, oh, it's too cold outside, it's too rainy outside, I don't want to run, oh, the camera, I don't want to make a YouTube video, oh, this, I don't want to do this, I don't want to study because of this, I don't, oh, you know what, I'll just put it off for tomorrow. I've said it, you've said it, I think everybody has said it at least once, oh, I'll just put it off for tomorrow, I'll just put it off for tomorrow. You're going to put your purpose off for tomorrow. See, when you think logically about this, that's not very smart. You must recognize that although there are barriers and although there's always a reason why you shouldn't go to the gym, you shouldn't eat this food, you shouldn't eat healthy, you shouldn't do this, that doesn't mean that you can't do it. People find one excuse and they give up completely. I can't do it. I mean, look at my hand, right? I didn't even show this yet. My hand's broke, but I'm still going to the gym. People find one excuse and then they give up completely. I can't do it. Since I've recognized that these excuses are really just God testing me, I've understand to embrace the excuse to do it anyways. That is what separates those who achieve their purpose and those who never get there in the first place. The next step is becoming one with your purpose is mandatory. And a lot of people don't really talk about this a lot of obsessiveness in general is honest to god not the best trait it's not good to be obsessive but we have to also understand that no matter what you're going to be obsessive about one thing right some people are obsessive about drugs alcohol partying going to the club <laughs> some people are obsessive about really just having a really effing good time but when it comes to your purpose, when it comes to drive, when it comes to ambition, when it comes to creating that business, getting to the top of your class, becoming a great basketball player, becoming a great MMA fighter, becoming a great at whatever your craft is. We don't really like that. We don't like when people become one with their purpose. What do you know Conor McGregor for? What do you know Kobe Bryant for? What do you know Steve Jobs for? Now, despite what you think about these people, it's obvious that when I say those names, a certain occupation comes up. That is because these people have achieved the obstacle of becoming one with your purpose. The funny thing about purpose is that if you want to achieve your purpose, it is mandatory to become one with your purpose. It's not something you can kind of put off to the side and oh, I'll do these other things along with it. No, it's mandatory to become one with their purpose. If you look at videos about how the people I just previously mentioned talk, that's really the only thing that they truly talk about. It's either their occupation or something surrounding it. Now I have three final steps in order to achieve truly becoming one with your purpose. Number one is do it every day. Do it every day, do it every other day. Schedule some time to focus on your purpose or schedule some time to put it in the forefront, giving complete and other flow and focus to it. You have to schedule it out. If you wanna become a basketball player, what do you have to do? You have to play basketball. But if you wanna become one of the greats, then you have to play basketball every day. You have to schedule it out. Another thing is think about it every day. Research it, understand it, understand the ins and outs of it. The action is great, but action without preparation, action without thoughts, action without that energy, that emotion, that drive, it's kind of pointless. You kind of don't really know what you're doing. You have to research, you have to think about it 24 7. Try to, and this is a very daunting task, but Try to have most of your thoughts centered around your purpose.
Now that's daunting. That's um, I'm not saying that's going to be easy because we have a lot of bullshit thoughts that come in our mind all the time. And most of these thoughts don't even matter. You know what I'm saying? But it's important to have most of your thoughts centered on your purpose. You can do this by watching content on YouTube about your purpose, or you can do this by reading books about your purpose as well. The last point is your purpose is ever changing. So there's this book called Way of the Superior Man. If you're really into self-improvement space, you've probably have heard of it. And I love this concept and this is how I've always felt about purpose, but the way David D'Elia said it was honestly right on target. Basically, your purpose is like an onion. There's multiple layers to it. So if right now you feel like your purpose is you just want to complete a marathon, you just want to run a marathon, that could be your purpose now, but next year you can have a completely different purpose. Often what we don't talk about is that your purpose is actually always changing. I mean, if you're hungry in the moment, then your purpose is going to be eating, right? So although you may just, maybe you just want to make a lot of money. Maybe that's just your purpose. Maybe you just want to make 10K, 20K a month, right? Just because that's your goal now, doesn't mean that that will always be your goal. Just because that's your purpose right now, doesn't mean that your purpose won't change. Because what happens if you reach that goal? Then you're going to have to change it. And you have to change it. And some people say that this ends, but I think, especially for a man, that your purpose needs to be ever changing or else you drift and you go to different places. If you've heard a lot of people, when they retire, they actually just die. They fall off the face of the earth and it's kind of, it's kind of messed up. But a lot of older gentlemen, when they turn 60 and they get the 401k and you know, everything's good and they're like, you know, I could finally retire. That's been my goal for so long is to retire. Shortly after they found dead, they found fuck. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Shortly after they found dead in their homes, just dead, and you hear this time and time again. Your purpose is not only ever changing, but I'll add this final point: it will be there for the rest of your life, and this is a good thing. This is happiness. We have weird misconceptions about happiness, but this is happiness. Chasing the rabbit, chasing the goal forever and having it ever change and completing those those goals fulfilling your purpose being satisfied and then going after another one that's it for today guys these are three unknown truths about your purpose make sure to like comment subscribe if you enjoyed